Hello, my friends. Welcome to another video. So, how is everybody today? I hope you are all fantastic. I'm doing good. I'm going to be working on this really, really cute seahorse that I got from artiststilldeath.com. It is absolutely darling. I just took a um, coat of this here, Joe Sonia Tinges Pond, I believe it's called the color. And I uh, painted just one coat on there really quick. Uh, nothing special. Uh, just to cover up the wood because I'm going to be using something fantastic on top of this piece of wood. And I can't wait to show you. So I turned the light on so that you can see this. This is a foil from Artistic Painting Studios. And I'm going to be using this on top of this seahorse. So it's just scales, but holographic scales. So I wanted to put something dark down first so that they really, really show up well. Uh, these foils, as you can see, they come in so many different patterns. I mean, they have solid colors. They have, um, you know, prints. They have ones that don't have holographic. I think I have one here I can show you. Well, this here is not holographic. It's just uh, some golds and bronzes and maybe a little bit of copper. Beautiful, beautiful addition to your artwork. I have done videos where I've used this in acrylic paint, like for acrylic pouring. Um, I've poured on top of this stuff. It works fantastic. So you can see here, I don't want to pull them all apart, but they have so many patterns, you know, and they are absolutely fantastic patterns. Look, that one's got little hearts. Like, look at that. That's gorgeous. All right, so I'm going to be using one of these foils on top of my little star, starfish, seahorse, and uh, we're going to do some artwork on top of it. You can also buy these in different lengths. Like this is the 12 by three feet long, I believe. But you can get them in a 12 by 12 sheet. I'm gonna put the information in the description and uh, along with a coupon code for you for a discount. I highly suggest you check them out. So yeah, this stuff is super easy to put down. I'm gonna show you how to do it once I get myself situated here and uh oh I love it I love it I love it love it so the first thing you want to do is just cut a piece that's big enough for your project now I'm going to cut this right here but I'm also going to be saving this part in here once I'm done because we can use all of that on a different project the only area I need it on is the seahorse. So you'll notice that I have it lined up right to the very edge of the spikes on the back of the seahorse. So that's how I'll position it when I'm ready to use it. Okay. Now, again, this stuff is extremely simple to use. You got to get a tub of this Artsyville Embellishments Foil Adhesive. They sell this on the website. You put some on your surface, brush it out, roll it out, whatever you have, a foam brush, anything will work, regular paintbrush. I prefer a little roller, but again, many different things will work. So you just put some of this on the surface and you're going to roll it out so that it has an even coat and then you're going to let it dry for an hour, okay? What it's going to do is it's going to dry, but it's going to have a really tacky surface to it. No matter how long you let it dry after that hour, let's say you let it dry for two days, it's not going to get any drier. It's always going to be tacky until you put the foil on the surface. All right, so you just want to do a nice even coat of this stuff and let it dry, as I said, for an hour. Now you can use it on the edges also. 
although a piece like this would be a nightmare to trim and get it into all these little grooves but if you have a wood canvas or you want to use this to do a countertop something like that which i am going to be doing one of those i promise it's coming uh an actual countertop with this stuff you just fold it over the sides you know put some of this on the sides too let it dry for the hour and fold it over the sides and you know follow the steps that i'm going to show you in this video so it definitely can be used on the sides as well all right so i'm going to finish putting this on let it dry for an hour and then i will be back okay so it's about three hours later as i said it will never dry past a certain point so there's no rush in getting to it. Uh, what I did here was I just laid the piece of foil on top of the surface and kind of smoothed it out. Now, if you put it down and you have wrinkles in it, it's okay to lift it back up and reposition it as you see me doing here. Now, the next thing I'm going to be doing is cutting away the excess so it's not in my way when I go to burnish this down with a soft cloth and a scrub brush. And do yourself a favor, save all of your scraps because you can make a beautiful piece of collage art with the leftovers of this foil. You know, you can combine pieces from other foils you may have used. And I have quite a few of these now. They're just so gorgeous. I just keep them in a little... Uh, manila folder manila envelope and uh, I'll use them in the future so once I get this trimmed out I will then come in with a soft cloth you know a dish towel even a soft washcloth you can use anything you have laying around the house an old t-shirt just anything that that's not really too abrasive and you want to rub down the surface really really well to make sure it is making contact in all the right places. You also want to make sure you get the edges of the, the piece that you're working on really, really well. You know, push it down and um, yeah, just do that over the entire piece. I had to trim out this little piece here because I was worried it was going to rip off the design. So I got rid of that really quick. I wanted to leave a little piece though hanging off the edge so I had something to grab onto when it was time to pull it off. So this is just a Dollar Tree scrub brush and I'm going over the entire piece. You want to make sure you go in the same direction. Do not go like straight up and down and then side to side in swirls because you'll see it in the design. Just pick one direction to scrub in and continue doing that throughout the entire piece. So now, once I'm done with this, I'm going to show you what it looks like under the light. It is so pretty. I love the way it's just twinkling. It's a really beautiful effect. But now we have to remove the clear film. ASMR alert. And voila, you see the pattern is off the clear film and onto your piece. It has transferred beautifully. I'm going to peel the rest of this off and then we're going to get started with the artwork. Before I go any further, I'm going to arrange a little bouquet of shells and, you know, some abalone e. <laughs> abalone shells. Uh, I got a little piece of an agate here that is just gorgeous. And I'll take a picture of it so that when it's time to actually put it down, because this will be the last step, um, I'll know where everything goes. So I just kind of arrange them and make sure I like them the way they are before I start doing the actual artwork on the piece, okay? I'm gonna probably add in a pearl and maybe a couple of little Swarovski crystals, but uh, this is just like 
the baseline of what the pattern is going to be and where I want my primary elements to be, like the, the pieces of driftwood and stuff like that, okay? So this is Win Modern Art Glitter, and it is called, I believe, Prism, yes. That's the Prism color. I have some Color Passion Top Cell White paste and some just resin in the color of sage and i'll explain these products to you more in a minute those abalone shells they are new zealand abalone shells i get those also through artisttilldeath.com everything that you see me using today except for the win modern art glitter is available through the atd shop so i'll have that information in the description for you so these are resin pastes and what you do is you put a little tiny bit into your resin and it colors it. So when it comes to the white and the black, there are two different types. There are top selling and there are bottom selling pigment pastes. When it says it's a top cell paste, that means you need to put the white on top of your color and it will create cells and lacing for you. If it's a bottom, it's the reverse. You put the paste, the white or black down first with your colors on top of that white or black and then it will create cells for you. However, I'm not really looking for cells in this piece to begin with. So... I'm not going to be using it in that way, but I wanted to explain the difference to you. So I sectioned off some of my resin a little bit into the sage color, a little bit into the white, and then I kept the rest clear and added a little bit of that prism glitter to it. So my vision is to coat this entire piece in clear, and then from the belly going up to the middle of the head and coming down a little bit, I want to create an ocean wave. And then on top of that wave, I'm going to put that little bouquet of driftwood and shells. And um, that's my idea for this piece. So I put some of my clear resin down and I spread it out over the entire piece. And then I came in with some of the sage and kind of just pulled it through the resin with the popsicle stick. Again, I'm looking to create a wave through this entire section here. So I put down some of the sage, I put down some of the white, and then I came in with some of the clear to create some depth. It's a fairly easy process. You're just, you know, moving the stick in whichever way you want to add the color. So a lot of this is repetitive and I'll, uh, you know, just let you watch here for a second and I'll be right back. So when you add clear resin on top of colored resin, what it does is it pushes that colored resin down and creates a 3D effect. So that's why I like to do that. Um, especially with oceans, you're going to get a lot of movement in the waves when you do something like this. So you put down some clear, then maybe come in with a little more color, put down some clear on top of that, kind of layer it up and up. And then you can blow it around a little bit with the heat if you want. Uh, for me, this was just the first layer, so it wasn't very important. Uh, but yeah, it's, again, very self-explanatory. Some things you want to know when working with resin are to always use gloves, proper protection, read the safety precautions. You want to work in a well-ventilated area and use a mask. And uh, yeah, but resin, once you get comfortable with it, is an amazing fluid art medium.
So now I personally didn't want to have a lot of movement here. I just kind of very, very gently moved some of that color, uh, blew the white over the sage and some of the clear around, but very, very minimal. You can, however, you know, put this on full force, this heat gun, and just really blow stuff around. Uh, for this project, though, I was trying to contain it to a certain area, so I didn't want to do that. Now you will notice one risk that you take when using heat like that is the resin thins out a lot and it's going to move on you. So you see me here removing some of that color because it was just too much. My goal was to have a wave flowing over the seahorse and I wanted you to see some of the bottom pattern. So with my best tools, my fingers, I removed some of it. When it comes to a technique like this in ocean, you can do layer upon layer. So I could let this dry, which I'm going to do another layer the next day. Let that dry. Do another layer the next day. I mean, I've done oceans that have had almost 10 layers of resin. I think nine was the most. And uh, it just creates so much beautiful movement. A little trick with resin, if you want to create some really defined lines with it, the thing to do is to let it sit around to where it starts getting really thick. Uh, you'll feel it start to warm up a little bit in the cup. At that point, when it's, you pick it up with the stick and it, you see that it's really starting to thicken up a bit, that is a perfect time to do something like I'm doing right now and create some really defined lines because it won't move as much. It will level out still, but it will stay in place and you'll get some really good defined lines that way. So now we're at the point where we're going to let this sit overnight and then we're going to come back for layer number two. All right, so here we go. It's the next day. I have a UV resin. I just want to tack down a few of these pieces so that it's not hard for me to get them into the, the wet resin. Um, so I use some UV resin just to tack down the pieces of driftwood and a couple of the shells. The other ones I just laid on top of the area and I come in with my resin that I use for the second coat here, and I use that to pour over it. Um, so when you use UV resin, you want to use it in a way where it's almost like gluing something super fast. And so you put that down, you put the piece on there, you use the little UV light, and then for 30 seconds, hold it over the area, and it's done. It's cemented down. It's a really strong adhesion. So, uh, yeah, that's what I used it for here. Here are two cute little seahorses I'm going to be adding onto my piece of driftwood along with those abalone shells again and uh, the agate, all the stuff I showed you in the beginning. So I mixed up my KS resin, and here you see I'm pouring it over the entire thing now. And then again, I come in with just some white and I create some more movement in the ocean area. And this piece is just absolutely stunning. It is so cute. By the way, did you know that you could swipe resin? Yes, you can. You could take a little piece of plastic and just kind of swipe over the color with it to create some movement. Um, if I had been using color with this white, we would have got some beautiful lacing in that area, but I was not using any other colors, so we won't get that with this. But just like in the, the first piece, I'm just kind of just dragging the colors through and creating a wave-like movement. I also made sure to leave some of that background poking through 
in a few areas of my wave so that you could tell it was kind of like water flowing over the piece. So I'm curious to know in the comments below, if you don't mind, do you use resin as a, a art medium, as a medium, or do you just use it as a top coat for your paintings? Personally, I love using it as an art form, a medium for art, because it just creates so much more interest in a piece that you can achieve with uh, acrylic paint. You know, acrylic, you can't achieve really this type of movement and look but um, yeah, I really like using this. Believe it or not, when I first started my channel, all I did was a lot of resin. I did some acrylic here and there, but I was mainly resin. And then somehow I got looped into acrylic pouring and kind of just forgot about my love of resin. But I'm playing it out today in this piece. I just like to really be creative and uh, I know I mentioned this last time in a video, sometimes it's just eh, acrylic pouring. It's over too fast. It's not creative enough for me. Okay, so we're going to let it sit overnight and we're going to come back 24 hours and see the final results. So I don't know if you caught what I was doing with that shell area, but I poured clear resin over the entire area there and that will be how it stays permanent and here it is all done i think this is so so cute got the little seahorse couple there on the little piece of driftwood and i added some of these little pearls micro pearls this is where i get those from and i'll put that discount in the description for you in the link but I'm very happy with it it's just a calm little wave brushing over the uh, surface of the seahorse and you can see here the little bit of lacing I got from swiping that white over now had I had some color under there you would have really seen a lot of uh, lacing but again I didn't want a lot on this piece just a very calm wave so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please click like and subscribe. Now, one thing I will do off camera, because it's nothing you really need to see, but I'll come in with this color again, this uh, Tingles Pond, and just paint the edges a solid color. Um, even though I do like the way it's flowing over here. Uh, eh, I'll probably paint it cover it up but we'll see we'll see but yeah i love those little micro pearls so let's see if there's some sparkle in this it'll be kind of hard to see because it's so bright in here right now but we have that beautiful scale pattern with the uh, sparkle in the clear resin the sparkle in the colored resin here got a little sparkle on our little shell bouquet and look at those abalone shell pieces they're so pretty this one right here right there but yeah that's it my friends so two quick announcements very important february 18th Canela Siraco and I are in Charlotte, North Carolina. The seats for the class are on sale for New Year's. So if you're interested in that, please go to the description and email us at fluidartescape at gmail.com for more information. We'll send you out everything you need to know. Again, seats are on sale, so send us an email. Second announcement is... I am going to be having a class, an all-day class, in Connecticut, finally. So, it's going to be coming up very soon. I'm working on 
booking the place now. If you are interested in information on that, send me an email, artbytammy at yahoo.com, and I will give you everything you need. So that's going to be an all-day learning class, and it is always a lot of fun to spend the day with you. So for all my Northeast peeps, holler at me at artbytammy at yahoo.com. What I will do is send you out information on what's going to be offered in the class and all of that, okay? I want to thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to leave a comment in the description of what you thought about this piece. This piece is spoken for, but uh, I'm always open for commissions. If you're looking for something similar or, you know, you have a different idea, send it to me. All right? I love you all, my friends, and until the next time, which will be Wednesday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Happy pouring.